Okay, so let's read some Philippine Spanish or Phil Hispanic literature. Um, this is not going to be a video of me translating this poem, but or some excerpt that I have here in this book of poems by Jose Rizal, um, but more so for you, for those of you Filipinos, and maybe some other foreigners, or just anybody in general who's learning Philippine Spanish, right? The Philippine Spanish dialect. Using this um, excerpt, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. In the in um and it's just gonna be, um kind of like a resource for you to to understand and help you with your pronunciation because I've noticed a lot of Filipinos who, are not formally trained in Spanish don't really have um a good grasp with Spanish pronunciation they tend to use the English or the American English pronunciation when they read Spanish and that is a big no no okay so. This video is just going to be me reading to you this, an excerpt of his Mi Ultimo Adios poem. And just kind of like, I'll, I'll, I'll be explaining some of the characteristics of the Philippine Spanish um, dialect that we have here. Okay? So again, this is just me um, kind of explaining the pronunciations of the Philippine Spanish dialect. So let's get started. Mi Ultimo Adios. Now remember, this D between A and E, right? La letra da entre A e, la, la, la A e, la, la E. La letra D, right? The D, letra D, makes the TH sound V, okay? It's a voiced, it's a voiced interdental fricative sound, V, right? Um, but in Philippine Spanish, it makes a hard D sound. So a lot of people would like to say this as a adios, right? And in standard Spanish, it's adios, right? Adios. Adios, adios. See the difference? Adios, adios, okay? Mi ultimo adios. Don't forget the accents, right? The accents are where the stress lies with the stress accent. Now, that's not going to be the case in all of these, right? But it's just there because sometimes the accent is placed there to help with the differentiation of the word. All right, so, adios, patria adorada. See, adorada, it has that D or the TH kind of V sound, v, the interdental fricative, that's voice. Adios, patria adorada, okay? Región, that G makes a H, right? The H, the guttural H, right? Región del sol querida. Perla, and once again, this Perla is a perla, not perla or perla. It's not perla, perla. That R is trilled. It's it's that R sound, okay? We need that R sound, not the R sound. Perla del Mar de Oriente. So it's, it translates to the Pearl of the Oriental Sea, right? Um, nuestro perdido er, uh, Eden, right? Our lost Eden. So, nuestro perdido, Eden, Eden, Eden. There's that accent on the E. And remember, perdido is that ido, ado, you know, that ido, ado ending, right? Um, and in Chavacano, this ido, ado gets ido, ado, right? And uh, it's not just in Chavacano, but it's also in other Philippine languages where the ado ending gets that D. It gets that hard D sound. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Spanish. So this D between two vowels, anytime there's that D between two vowels, right, it gets that voiced um, voiced interdental fricative sound, th. And when it's spoken fast, that th disappears. And that's how we get words like colorado, when it's colorado. Colorado, colorado. Perdido, perdió. Okay, perdido or something like that. It just gets blended together because that th sound disappears. A darte voy alegre, la triste mustia vida. Again, that vida, right? Vida. Y fuera más brillante. Ooh, look at this. Brillante. Brillante. That double L, right? La letra L. Eh, and in this case, you know, in este caso tenemos 
la, la doble L, right? So the two L's, we have two L's, and the two L's make the L-Y sound in Philippine Spanish, okay? Um, as well as in the standard Spanish dialect. So in standard Spanish, it's li, right? Li sound makes that lambda. Brillante. So you have to, again, trill that R and add the li sound. Brillante. Más fresca. Más fresca. Más florida. Okay? Florida. También, por ti la tierra. La tierra por tu bien. En campos de batalla, luchando con delirio. Otros te dan sus vidas. Okay, this is a tricky one. See how this letter, or the letra B, or V, sorry, la letra V starts with a, this V, the, the V sound, right? And it's not a strong B, it's a weak V, okay? It's not a B, but a V. It's a really, a really weak kind of bilabial sound. So it's not vidas, but vidas. Okay, sus vidas, okay? It's not a v. We're not saying vida, like as in van or vehicle or v. It's not that sound because that sound doesn't exist in Spanish. But it's a v, a really, really weak v. Sus vidas, sin dudas, sin pesar. El sitio nada importa. Cipres. Oh, look. So the ci, again, we talked about this with the Spanish characteristics right the c before or the c bef um, with the i or the c e make that th the interdental fricative sound but instead of it being a voiced interdental fricative it's a voiceless interdental fricative right so we don't say th but we say th, th. you're just blowing out air th. cipres cipres and remember that accent cipres okay this syllable here pres gets the the accent or the stress Laurel o lirio, cadalso o campo abierto, combate o cruel martirio. Lo mismo es si lo piden la patria y el hogar. Okay, this word here, el hogar, el hogar. Okay, it's in standard Spanish, it's el hogar. But in Philippine Spanish, we put that glottal stop there. Remember, the H, la letra H en español, no tiene sonido. The letter H in Spanish doesn't have a sound. So this, this H, this H, right? We, we would like to say this hogar, right? In English, we'll, we'll pronounce it as hogar, hogar. But in Spanish, it's hogar, hogar, okay? You never pronounce this the English way. It's always Spanish. El hogar. And we put that glottal stop between this L and the, and the O. So we get el paz hogar. El, stop, hogar. So, el hogar, instead of saying el hogar, as in the, not like in the standard Spanish, which should probably be el hogar, but the H is silent, and it is always silent in Spanish, okay? It never makes a sound unless a word was borrowed or something like that, okay? El hogar. Yo muero cuando veo que el cielo, again, cielo, <laughs> Um, el cielo se colora. Y al fin, uh, sorry, y al fin anuncia el día tras lo brego capuz. And I'm just going to stop right there. So hopefully this gives you kind of like a, bit, uh, a bigger picture of the pronunciation of Philippine Spanish, right? And again, this is just an excerpt from Mi Último Adiós by José Rizal, okay? And I actually got this book of poetry from him, right? This is just a little book um, of just poems by José Rizal, right? José Rizal y Alonso, and it's poemas. It's just a collection of his um, of his poetry um, that he's written over time. And I just wanted to share this little excerpt with you, right? As a, as a way of just, um, as an exercise for pronouncing these uh, pr pronouncing Spanish or reading Spanish as it should be pronounced instead of being it pronounced the American English way as most Filipinos will do that. I guess I can finish off the poem with this last excerpt, right? So the last excerpt of this, right, 
and I just want you to 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 hear me out on this and then observe. Amigos de la infancia en el perdido hogar, dan gracias que descanso del fatigoso día. Adiós, dulce extranjera, mi amiga, mi alegría. Adiós, queridos seres, morir es descansar. Right, so he's talking about being put to rest here. Dying is morir es descansar. To die is to rest. Right, he's talking about the end of his life, so to speak, or talking about the ending of this whole situation. Right, amigos de la infancia. So friends of infancy. Okay, dad gracias que descanso. So here, it's evident here that in Philippine Spanish, we use, right, we use the forms of vosotros, so, en español filipino usamos las formas de, de vosotros, así es, es el ejemplo en dad, la palabra dad, right here, so dad is the, um, is the vosotros command form for give, you all give, or y'all give, right, y'all give uh, thanks, y'all give thanks, Dad. So the verb that this dad comes from is dar. Dar means to give, but you want to make it into the vosotros um, affirmative or yeah, the positive affirmative command. It's dad by adding that d at the end. Okay, and it's a really solemn poem as you can tell, right? But again, that's just one thing I just wanted to share with y'all. And I think next would be some more of his other poems, but that's going to be in another time.